I'm on a road cut on 95, just a bit north of uh, Republic. And here we're looking at what you can clearly identify as a uh, granite. You get some feldspars in here. It's a mixture of quartz and uh, if we get real closely, quartz grains, lots of biotite mica running all throughout here. That's the platy black mineral, very shiny. So here you go, you got your granite, right? Mystery solved. Here we go, the granite changes a little bit over here. Gets a little more felsic, a little more feldspar in it, a little more quartz, less, uh, less biotite. But you know, you get variations in granite, sure, why not? But then, uh, well, what, what, wait, hold on now, what's going on over here? Well, this, this doesn't fit at all. This, we've got a black rock pressed up against. This, this clearly isn't granite. Very fine grained. And it's got all these crystals coming out of it here, which is telling me that this is metamorphic. Look at this, all this shiny biotite mica. Biotite, remember when it weathers, it turns gold colored. You see gold plating minerals, it's virtually always biotite in here. So all this black is mostly biotite. So we've got a very fine grained amphibolite here. And this is what those, those minerals are. I don't, I don't recognize that. I can't tell you immediately what, what mineral that is. So, all right, well, now that's weird. We got this amphibolite pressed right up against our granite. Well, maybe we had the granite intruded and it cooked those rocks. Certainly can happen. So, okay, so we got a granite here. And it cooked these, these amphibolites over here. So, okay, we've, we've figured it out. It's pretty straightforward. Oh, wait, hold on. Now we got something else going on over here. What, what have we got going on over here? Okay, well now we've got, we've got very coarse grained amphibolites here, maybe a nice texture here. Tons of biotite mica, look at that. Tons, tons, tons. So what do we got here? We got a little section of granite in between two pieces of very obviously metamorphic rock. Well, and then over here, they push through here. And we're back into more granite-like material here. So what are we seeing here? Oh, and it's pressed right up against the gneiss. What we're seeing is one of my favorite things to identify in the group. One of my favorite things to do is come in and tell someone, hey, what you think you have is granite isn't really granite. It is the granite look-alike, the imposter, the metamorphic imposter, migmatite. Migmatites are very advanced metamorphic rocks. These ones here, I forget, are between two and three billion years old. They are more than half the age of the earth. It is hard to find very many rocks in the world that are older than these. They've been through a lot. And they've been almost completely remelted. And you get a variety of textures cropping up in them when you look at them in the ground. And this is typical of it here. You've got I haven't even gone down there to see what, what textures we have down there, but it's probably more of the same, this fine grain amphibolitic texture here. And then you have your granitic texture over here. And then you come over here and you have more amphibolite and nice and granite mixed together. This is your classic migmatite. You've probably seen me identify migmatites in samples you've uh, put uh, up for identification. You can sometimes look for structures that granites shouldn't have. For example, stuff like this. I'm seeing foliation in this. I'm seeing patterning in the minerals. If we look at these feldspars here, we notice orientation of the grains like that. That's not common in actual igneous granites. So these are techniques I use to identify them in your hand samples. But of course, when you're in the field, you can just look and you see a whole mixture of these styles of rock together. It's the migmatite. Migmatites aren't all that common globally. They're actually probably 
one of the most common rocks in the world underneath mountain ranges. But since we're not used to seeing the inside of mountain ranges, they're one of the more, one of the less common rocks to encounter, unless you're in a very old terrain, which you get here in the Michigami Republic area. You might be able to tell from the sound of traffic, I'm still on 95 here. In fact, I am less than a quarter mile from where I was filming the last segment here. Look at the migmatites though. I see these beautiful granite rocks and so I come over here for a closer look. And in fact, these ones aren't granite. You can't call them granite. I mean, we know we've discussed it already. They're migmatites. But right here, what you've got, these large crystals, this really makes this a pegmatite. What's the difference between a granite and a pegmatite? Well, a pegmatite is based on the crystal size. And I believe one centimeter is the cutoff. If I'm wrong about that, I'll correct myself in the video. But you gotta love these nice chunky crystals. This is, I'm not sure whether this is an igneous pegmatite because they're supposed to be a, some sort of a vein or a dike of pegmatite running through these rocks um, somewhere in the area here. I suspect based on mineral orientations they're all lining up pretty nicely here that is probably a pegmatitic texture in this migmatite so not a true pegmatite it's a pegmatitic textured migmatite section here these are really complicated these are some of the more complicated rocks you'll encounter um, so if you find this confusing don't worry yourself about it if you can if you can follow what I'm saying here, you can probably understand most of what you'll ever encounter. But beautiful chunky feldspars. These are, these are pink alkali feldspars you're mostly looking at. The dark color is primarily biotite, but there's almost certainly some other things in there. A little lichen there to confuse you. you got, uh, looks like we got a little vein of quartz running along a crack here. A little biotite mineralization in that quartz vein here. You see, yeah, you can see here it actually starts to get almost a nice texture again. The crystal size shrinks and then it comes back up. So I would say this is definitely still migmatite. It's pretty awesome stuff. Oh, look, I want to take one home. There's a little piece right here. Let's see here. I'll leave that for one of you. Oh yeah, well here's here's your answer to whether or not it's pegmatite here. Look look at the neighboring rocks here. There we go. Well now we're we're out of that pegmatitic texture and back into this fine grained amphibolite. And what did I park next to here? We've got a granitic, maybe pegmatitic texture again. Yeah, so these are your your pegmatites. Super complicated rocks. You know what? Simple rocks are kind of boring. Let's talk about your diversity of textures in a migmatite road cut here. We got all sorts of interesting things going on. Let's talk about the geology very briefly as we walk it here. So we've got a granite exposure here. Maybe not true granite, granitic though. And then, bam, we got this guy right here cutting right through it. Well, this is what's called a dike. This is an intrusive magma body. So this magma cut right through this rock like a knife, really. It looks like it cut through it like a knife. I, the, it actually happens a bit more like a jackhammer, actually. It's the, it forces its way up as a combination of pressure cracking the rock and melting its way through. But look how sharp these transitions are right here between the, the granitic migmatite and then this dike right here and then more on this side. It's a very fine grained mafic rock. It's really escaping me the name of it. I'll, I'll post it on the video here. And we get some uh, probably pegmatite textures in here. We got some large crystals here. 
We're gonna follow along. This is not a dike. This is mineral staining. You can see the uh, water coming down here. So this is either this is either mineral or algae. Probably a little bit of both. Probably more algae than mineral. And we got more of this granitic, pegmatitic texture here. And then bam, we got another small dike cutting through. You notice this one's at a very different angle than the previous one. The previous one was going straight back into it. This one's really coming in at an angle like so. Very interesting. Some of these dikes traveled for, for miles. Some of them went a few thousand feet. It's hard to say where they start and stop below us and where they would have stopped above us. We got here, what do we have here now? We got a little bit of a dike type structure running through here. But you see it's curved and it's not a distinct, you know, the boundaries aren't as distinct here. This tells me that this is a metamorphic feature. Some interesting red mineral there. I don't, I don't know what that is. You get some really interesting minerals in uh, these advanced metamorphic rocks. And here we got this beast cutting through it. I haven't had a look at this guy yet. It's probably a similar material to what we were seeing before. Well, that's kind of interesting. We see these wavy foliations here. This suggests that this is metamorphic. In fact, if we look up here, we see shiny micas in here. So this is definitely metamorphic. Now, whether or not this is a dike that metamorphosed, I'm actually doubtful about that. Looks like a different sedimentary unit that just meta metasomatized, metamorphosed in a different way than from the rest of it. But it's very hard to say. I'd have to really study this thing to give you a good answer. I know a lot, but it doesn't mean <laughs> I can glance at a rock and tell you the complete history every time. And here we've got, well, what do we got over here? We've got a transition into more of a nice texture over here. G-N-E-I-S-S, -S, nice. Although it is nice and I-C-E -E as well. And here we've got this big vein of quartz cutting through this thing. Look at that. Got a few little pockets of mineral here. My first guess would be that it's biotite. Look at that beautiful vein quartz here. And then we've got this highly foliated, I call this a, a schist of some sort, amphibolitic schist, I don't know. It's a, it's a mess is what this is. But you can see that this rock is composed almost purely of biotite. So I suppose that makes it technically an amphibolite. But it's a very schisty, highly foliated texture here. It's really crazy. Pretty cool. If you ever wanted to collect some biotite, I mean, this would be the spot to get it. In Michigan, at least. Get all that. All that in there. And then we go right back into this. So what was this? I'm going to say based on that guy here and this one right here that there were some sedimentary units in here. Of course, all, in, all migmatites started off as sedimentary rocks um, and were just cooked beyond recognition. And I think what we're seeing here are different layers of sedimentary rocks. And notice that these are completely vertical. So that really suggests that these, these units here... Uh, you know they've been they've been tilted 90 degrees straight up there's been all sorts of mountain building events and such over the past several billion years they've been probably been pointed every which way through geologic time here we go we got maybe another maybe another dike i'm gonna say probably another dike this looks like a mafic igneous rock here Dikes, of course, always come after the rocks they're surrounded by. 
because you can't crack your way through a rock before that rock you're cracking through exists. So dikes are always younger features. And there's no way to tell how old they are. Some of them might be relatively recent. And relative might be 900 million years old. I don't know. I haven't specifically studied these guys. This looks like another dike now. I, I just don't know. This one really pinches out in an interesting way. Take a look away. That one kind of just pinches and flares out. Lastly, can't tell you for sure what's going on here, except that it's super interesting. Michigan's Migmatites. So much to look at. I was hoping those are minerals, but that's not. Oh, wait, what do we have up here? We got some other stuff. All right, this is probably metamorphic. It's got large crystals in there. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, fun. Even an expert gets baffled looking at these rocks. Local geologists might be able to tell me exactly what's going on. Love it.